We're speaking with Britton Ladd, who is an independent consultant who is doing some work uh, with uh, uh, redesigning the supply chain for, for trucking. Uh, uh, Britton, thank you for joining us today. Could you spend a few minutes oh, my yeah, talking a little bit about the, the business model that you have uh, developed and how you think it will address some of the needs of shippers and carriers? Well, the, the, the thing that I have put my focus on is this. There are many companies out there that are saying, we're going to be the Uber of trucking. And Uber itself has Uber trucking. And what you find is that there's a, there's a tremendous focus on the technology aspect of applying technology to try and make transportation trucking more efficient. What I've done is this. I've made the argument that if you really want to make trucking efficient, address the primary constraints that exist within trucking. So the methodology I've come up with is this. If you take technology and you allow that technology to be leveraged for a third party operation where you create a consortium of trucking companies. So what does that mean? There are over 500,000 trucking companies in the United States today, some large, some small. If you take the larger trucking company and you have them join a consortium, what you're asking them to do is this, join a consortium and abide by some, some specific rules, specific regulations. And what I've asked them to do is this, if you join the consortium, allow your drivers to become contractors and allow your drivers to be paid by the hour and not by the mile, and allow your drivers to drive any truck for any other consortium member. In addition, allow your truck to pull any trailer of any consortium member. And more importantly, allow your truck to operate 24-7, 365 days a year, and the way that's accomplished is by switching out drivers wherever necessary to ensure there's always a driver behind the wheel with enough hours to keep the truck moving. And I've done tremendous amounts of research on this. I actually started doing this at Dell. I perfected it at Amazon. And I was fortunate enough to get a lot of data from 2016, 2017. And when I applied this methodology to the annual loads, the annual freight tonnage that was moved in those years, this methodology can move that same amount of freight, but do so with about 33% fewer trucks. So I've had multiple people per, uh, evaluate the model. I know the model works. And it's just something that I've enjoyed talking about because a lot of trucking executives are now reaching out to me and they're fascinated by the idea. Yeah, it, it's interesting to me as well because um, it, you seem to be focusing here on something that um, uh, more companies I, I think are interested in doing, which is uh, collaborating with other companies. It could be their competitors, it could be in some cases their shippers. Uh, so they're looking outside of their own company to, for more efficiencies and this might be one way to, to get it. Um, what sort of reaction have you gotten from uh, fleets and how would you uh, implement this plan, do you think? How do you think it's going to play out over time? How long would it take to, 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 to create something like this? Well, the, the feedback I got um, and the way I actually perfected this is I actually started with truck drivers first. And I started speaking with drivers. And I said, look, I'm going to run something by you, and I want you to tell me if you think it's a good idea or a bad idea. And you know as well as I do, truck drivers are going to tell you the truth. Yeah. If they think it's good, they'll tell you. If they think it's bad, they'll tell you that too. And I was very surprised by how many truck drivers immediately latched onto the idea. And they liked it. The only thing that concerned them is a lot of drivers are comfortable driving the same truck over and over, and oftentimes they prefer that. But what I said to them is crush all assumptions. Don't, don't think about this only from your perspective as a driver and your comfort level. 
just look at it from the idea itself. And I, thought, and I spoke with a few drivers and then dozens of drivers until I've spoken with hundreds of drivers. And the drivers all told me, they're like, this absolutely can work. But the thing they were concerned with is, well, what would executives think about this? And so when I started to speak with executives, the thing that I asked them is, walk me through where your biggest pain points are. And it was always, I can't find enough drivers, I can't take on more business, or I go through these cycles where I have too many trucks and not enough work, or I have too few trucks and way too much work. And the thing that I focus on with the executives was really helping them understand that if you collaborate, collaboration to me accelerates innovation. And that's a phrase I use with them. Don't maintain your same business model, whether you're Schneider, J.B. Hunt, doesn't matter, big or small. If your business model is, I'm going to have my own trucks, I'm going to have to find my own drivers, and I'm only going to operate as an independent trucking company, your frame of reference and vision is very narrow. So what I ask executives to do is crush all assumptions and imagine if you had an ability for a third party to where they're accepting loads, from, third, from shippers all across the U.S., retailers, manufacturers, doesn't matter, for dry van, for reefers, for liquid bulk, for flatbed, doesn't matter. This third party has an ability to receive the loads. And if part of that process, you as, as a member of a consortium, you simply say, leverage my trucks, leverage my trucks to haul dry vans, reefers, liquid bulk, doesn't matter. Leverage my equipment with the goal of making it as efficient as possible and maximize the utilization. And when I walked through this with executives, they, they were shocked, they were surprised, they didn't get when I wanted to pay drivers by the hour, so I had to walk them through the math of doing that, but then they realized it was a good idea. So, so far, I've never had a single executive say they wouldn't do it. They're just interested in seeing what the reaction is in the market. And uh, I find it fascinating to, that someone uh, with your background, your experience working with Amazon, uh, this is a company that uh, uh, if, any, if there's any company in, in the market that can start with a clean sheet of paper and design something, uh, they can, it seems like. So uh, based on what you know about the company and what their needs are for freight transportation going forward, what should the trucking industry learn from from Amazon and uh, what sort of things uh, should they uh, keep in mind as they look towards servicing a company like this going forward? Well, really what trucking companies, what executives need to take away from Amazon is this. Don't be afraid to think big. What makes Amazon special is that they will entertain big ideas. And when someone comes up with a big idea, the reaction isn't, wow, that's really too big. We could never do that. That might be hard. What they say is, wow, we haven't thought of that. So let's pursue that. And you know as well as I do, there are many executives in the trucking industry who will say, well, that's not what we do. We're a flatbed carrier. We could never, ever think about becoming a, uh, a carrier of, of other products. We, we could never branch out. We could never think about going into LTL because this is what we do. At Amazon, there are no boundaries, there are no limits. And so when you operate in that type of an environment, any idea is worth exploring. So the thing that I would say to, to executives is, change your business model and your culture to where you're more understanding of how does a company like Amazon <clears throat> and Google and Facebook and other companies out there operate and instead of going at the problem from the framework of your business model, really step back and ask, what is it that these companies honestly need in terms of a transportation solution to thrive and survive? And most of the companies today have a need for basic truck transportation, but they have a last mile delivery need as well. And how many trucking company executives have ever come up to you and said, wow, we've really made a lot of investment in that last mile delivery solution. They're always acting as if somebody else has to do that. 
And I have no doubt that the trucking companies that are successful in the future will be the ones that can say to an Amazon or someone else, we have an end-to-end -end capability to meet your needs. We can do inbound and outbound truck transportation, or we can do last mile delivery. The company I think that's really leading the industry of what the industry is going to have to be is XPO Logistics, because they have warehouses fully automated with robotics, they have last mile delivery, they have inbound outbound truck transportation, and they have an LTL capability. So XPO Logistics to me is the gold standard of what the trucking company of the future is going to look like. They've just been able to accomplish that today. And not surprising that the XPO is headed by a guy who came into the industry from outside. So, uh, Exactly. Uh, Bradley yeah. Jacobs. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best CEO in all of the transportation industry. Stand.